Only God could have created all the loveliness of spring, made the bell to bud and blossom, taught the robin to sing. Only God could have remembered through the winter cold and gray, cold and gray. How to renew the earth with beauty and give us this Easter day. We like lilies, lilies. We like Easter lilies because they are straight and tall. They make us think of, think of angels. We like lilies. We like Easter lilies because they are straight and tall. They make us think of angels and God who love us all. He lives. Happy Easter. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. He lives. Serve him to receive salvation. Eternal life. He he lives. Easter Day. This is all I had to say. Happy Jesus Easter Day. Easter praise. Now is spring and we sing praise to Jesus, our Savior and King. Easter prayers. N now it's spring and we sing. We pray to Jesus, our Savior and King. Green is for palms as they wave at him, he entered into Jerusalem. Purple is for the wine he poured and blessed before he faced his final test. Red is for the precious blood he shared, shared from the crown thorns placed on his head. Black is for the sky as he died on the cross, suffering to redeem our loss. Die 
Remember God's gift. Remember the resurrection. May your soul uplift. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. What is Easter? It's not about the eggs to hunt. It's not about a bunny. It's not about the brand new clothes or candy sweet as honey. On this day, many years ago, a man named Jesus Christ, upon the cross for you and me, gladly gave his life. Not for the sins he had done or the crimes he must repay. He did it all for you and me, for our sins he died that day. But that's not the end of Jesus Christ. They put him in the grave, but three days later, he rose again. Our sin that had finally been paid. So this Easter, as you hunt for eggs, Dress up in your brand new clothes. Don't think about the Easter Bunny, but think about why Christ arose. Jesus is the morning star. Jesus is the Jesus is the morning star. Jesus is the life. Jesus is the redeemer. May His blessing. Jesus is the savior. May His blessings be upon you on Resurrection Day and always. Easter cheer. Let's clap our hands, stand up and shout. Let us know what this is about. It's Easter and Jesus is alive. The jelly bean prayer. Red is for the blood he gave. Orange. Red is for the blood he gave. Green is for the grass he made. Yellow is for the sun so bright. Orange is for the edge of night. Black is for the sense we made. White is for the grace he gave. Blue is for his hours of sorrow. Pink is for a new tomorrow. A cup of jelly beans so colorful and sweet is a prayer and promise an Easter treat. The sky shall unfold, preparing his entrance, and the stars shall applaud. A bruised heel, a pierced side, on cruel cross my Savior died. He did not stay in death's cold grave, but he is risen up, he victory gave. Though he was slain and underlaid, he rose again, and our sins debt paid. According to scriptures true, he giveth life free unto you. He is in heaven, our Christ and Lord. He giveth grace to trust his word. Though Satan told us to accuse, if we trust God, we cannot lose. His love. God sent his son to take the punishment for all the thoughtless, sinful things we do. Jesus gave his life because he loves us. His love is boundless, sweet, and forever true. On Easter morn, he showed he was our Savior. His resurrection proved he was our Lord. That is why we tell you, Happy Easter. He secured our heavenly reward. Easter everywhere. Rabbit soft and cuddly, baby chicks too. Easter cards for, Easter eggs for baskets, white, pink, and blue. 
Easter cries of greeting, music in the air, Lily's just to tell us it's Easter everywhere. The women, his mother. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father, Jesus our Redeemer, the Holy Spirit our Comforter and our God. We greet you on this blessed Resurrection Sunday. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth remain silent before him. Let us pray together. God our Father, we thank you for another day. For this is the day that the Lord hath made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for this Resurrection Sunday signifying the fact that we serve a risen Savior. We thank you for the privilege of being called your children. So we come now to call upon your name, for there's no other name that we can call upon. We're living in some challenging and some troubling time, but you're still God and you're God all by yourself. We still thank you for the sufficiency of your grace, that your grace is sufficient that your strength is made perfect in the midst of our weakness. There are many things that are changing all around us from day to day, but we're thankful that you remain the same because you remain the same. You're still worthy to be praised. We say thank you for this day. We don't know what tomorrow is going to hold, but we praise you for this day. We don't know what our future holds, but we know who holds our future. So we praise you for this day. And we don't believe that you brought us this far in order to leave us. So in the midst of everything that's going on around us, in the midst of the love and race of the virus, we come with a spiritual attitude of gratitude just to say thank you. Thank you for another day. I, I will bless the Lord at all times. Uh, his praise shall continue to be in my mouth. So we say thank you for this day. We're praying for mankind all over this world right now. We're praying for those who have been victims of the virus. We're praying for all families right now. We're praying for those who are without employment right now. We're praying for those who are struggling from one day to the next day. But God, we know if God be for us, that he is more than the world is against us. So we come now casting all our cares upon you because we know that you carry much for us. We come now acknowledging you are over Jireh for the Lord will provide. You're Jehovah Nisi. You will fight our battle. You're Jehovah Shalom. Uh, you will give us a peace uh, that surpasses all understanding. You're Jehovah Rapha. The Lord is a healer. You're Jehovah Rohi. The Lord is our shepherd. And because of you, you know, we know that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask to think according to the power that worketh within us. Have your way in this house. Have your way in this place. And we'll be mindful to give your name all the praise and all the glory because you're worthy to be praised. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Thank God and amen.
church say amen. 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 We thank our praise seat for rendering the music for us on this Sunday under the leadership of Minister Anthony Alton. Amen. Amen. We thank our Archbishop Vernon, Pat, Earl, thank y'all, Stephen and Cortland. Thank you so very much. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you what I would do. If I was at home today and following the mandate, not being able to get out to worship, what I would have done last night, I would have got my clothes out just like I normally do every yeah, Sunday. I would have got up this morning and got dressed. That's right. I would have fixed myself a breakfast. Yes, God. Amen. I would have put on my Sunday go to me now fit. Right. Amen. And I'll be having church at home just like I was at here. Say, you miss somebody. I'll be having church. If I was shouting in church, I'll be shouting at the house. If I was dancing in church, I'll be dancing at the house. Amen. How many of you know you can close the building, but you can never close the church? <laughs> can I say that again? You can close the building, but you can never close the church. Uh, but the church is in you, wherever you go, wherever you are, you ought to take the church with you, amen? And I'm glad I don't need a full house in order to praise him. I'm, I'm glad I don't need to be able to look at my neighbor and, and have to get my praise from my neighbor. Because it wasn't my neighbor that woke me up this morning. It wasn't my neighbor that started me on my journey. It wasn't my neighbor that had blood running through my veins. It was nobody but the Lord. So I made up my mind a long time ago. If don't nobody else praise him, I'll praise him all by myself. Because somebody here ought to know that he's worthy to be praised. Because he's worthy to be praised. Uh, whether you praise him or not, uh, I'm going to praise him. I don't need a big house to praise him. I don't need a big car to praise him. I don't need money in the bank to praise him. All I need is a good memory for when I think uh, of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. My soul. Christ, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. There's a sweet spirit is in this place, and I know it is the spirit of the Lord. As we prepare to worship God through giving now, as we bring to God his tithes and our offering. I remind you the songwriter declared that you can't be God-given no matter how hard you try. For the more you give to God, the more he always gives back to us. And giving is not always received in financial blessing back to us, but he blesses us so many ways. The Bible says, he that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that sows bountifully shall reap bountifully. I want to thank you for your faithfulness in your stewardship. I want to thank you that in the midst of the coronavirus, in the midst of the financial challenge on last Sunday, which was our first Sunday, on last Sunday we had the largest offering that we had in five years. Somebody ought to say me. God, God is so awesome. 1 Corinthians 4 and 2 says, what's required of a steward is that you be found faithful. Amen. If we're faithful, God always reward our faithful. Yes. Yes. Let's look at the ways we give here at the Central Missionary Baptist Church so that everybody will be familiar with it. Those who are watching live, you can go, you can see up under your donation button and they're listed there for you. The first one we have e-giving and many of our church members are using e-giving as a form of giving e-giving they're using pay they are on e-giving when you give some people give according to their debit cards their credit cards and i always encourage you if you're going to give using a credit card always pay it off at the end of the month never pay interest on what you're giving back to the lord amen, amen. and then we have gillify which is a proper mobile app giving that many are using on the mobile app. You can go download the Gillify app. When you download it, a picture of the pastor in the church comes up. 
to make sure you're at the right Central Baptist Church because that Central Baptist Church is in other parts of the country, but you use Gillify. And then we also have PayPal, which is a convenient method that many are using. A popular method we just started recently is Cash App. If you're gonna use the Cash App, the Cash App has that, you have the dollar sign there, CBC, that's Central Baptist Church Columbia. That's what you're using for your Cash App. And now we have another method of give entitled text to give. Text to give allows you to text to this number. Just go when you get ready to do a text and put the number 73256. You text that number in, then a link comes up there and it sets you up for credit, debit, or bank account. Once you set up one time, you don't have to set it up again. It's automatically in there for you. Amen? So whatever method works for you, whatever's convenient, some people mail their ties in the 3625 Clement Road, Columbia, South Carolina, 29203. Uh, some people bring their ties to the worship experience. We thank you for whatever method you use. Thank you, Corlin, for all the work you're doing with Patrick, man, and getting everything set up for you. We we'll appreciate you much. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give back to you a portion of that which you have blessed us with. Thank you for the faithfulness of the stewardship helpers of the members here at the Central Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you for those faithful tithers, for those who are maturing in the grace of giving. I meet the praying for those right now who have not matured enough to trust you, but I want you to bless them anyhow. Bless them and keep them in your divine and providential care so they will grow in the grace knowing that the ministry work continues to go on. Keep us in your care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Church, say amen. amen. Let us prepare for the priest's word today as we look at our scripture reading on today from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Our scripture reading today, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. And we want to start with verse number 12. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, and verse number 12. It said, Now if Christ be priest that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Mm -hmm. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? Well, well, well. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching in vain, well, well, well. and your faith is also in vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of a God that he raised up Christ whom he raised not up. If so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is Christ not raised? And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. And yet ye are in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perish. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead, 
and become the first fruit of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man also came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Let the church say amen. amen. to read in 1 Corinthians 15, 12 through 22 for summarizing purposes. Let's look at verse 12 and 13. For if now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. On this second Sunday in April, I just want to tag this 
resurrection sermon idea from this thought. We serve a risen Savior. We serve a risen Savior. My brothers and my sisters, we are our Heavenly Father's children. And he loves us once and all. Even though there are times we find ourselves answering to a different voice and call. But the good thing about him, he knows just how much we can bear. That's a good testimony there, my brothers and sisters. He knows just how much we can bear. I say to those who are gathered with us, happy Resurrection Sunday. And I want to remind you on this Resurrection Sunday that we serve a risen Savior. I want to remind you that he is alive. I can feel him all over me. He's not dead. I can feel him in front. I can feel him in the back. I can feel him on my left, and I can feel him on my right. It's good to know that he is alive. In the midst of everything that's going on around us, uncertain climate, uncertain condition, economical challenges, I want you to know it's good to know that he is alive. As I read reports on last night and found out that in South Carolina statewide, we have over 3,000 cases of the coronavirus, over 80 deaths in the midst of it all. It's good to know that he's still alive. There are many people sitting back wondering whether they're going to get that stimulus package, when it's going to come, or when it comes, it will come. But if it doesn't come, he still is alive. Uh, do I have a witness in here? Because he's alive, he's promised to supply all of my needs. Uh, so I'm not worried about anything. I've learned how to put it in the Lord's hand. Because I trust and believe that the Lord will make a way somehow. So we serve a risen Satan. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because he lives, life is worth the living. All because he lives. Well, in our text on the day, Paul is giving instruction to the church at Corinth concerning their belief on the resurrection. And that's why we ought to be able to celebrate Resurrection Sunday on today. I know it's a little bit differently than the way you celebrated in the past. I, I know there have not been any cantatas, and, and, I, and I know that the Easter trimming that many people observe may not be there, but he is alive, and that's the main reason for Resurrection Sunday. Amen, somebody. It's not about the egg. It's not about the bunny. It's not about the new outfits and all of that. It's a fact that we serve a risen Savior and that he is alive. The Grecian culture had a tremendous amount of influence on the Corinthian church. Most Greeks did not believe that people's bodies would be resurrected after death. They saw the afterlife as something that happened only to the soul. They did not believe in the resurrection of the body. Some in the church were flatly denying the resurrection, and some were apparently following the false teaching of others. But my brothers and sisters, the resurrection is very central to our faith and central to who we are. And that's why it's good to know that we celebrate a risen Savior. Do I have a praying church in here? My brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I know that he's alive. The resurrection of Christ is the center of the Christian faith. Because he rose, he lives and represents to us God. Because he rose and defeated death, because we know we will also rise ourselves. Yes, there will always be people who will say that Jesus did not rise from the dead. Paul was reminding the church the importance of the gospel which he had already heard. They were acting as though they had never heard the gospel. Mm. When I look at all the reports that's going on around us, I need to remind believers that you ought to know the gospel. You ought to know the good news in spite of what's going on around us. This is not the first time we've had hard time. This is not the first time we've had challenges time. This is not the first time we had to go through something. But through it all, the Lord has been with us. And through it all, the Lord is with us right now. For verse number two of the text reminds us, this is the same gospel which you were saved by. 
Verse 3, and for so Christ died for our sin, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scripture. That were our witnesses to the resurrection of Christ remind us that Christ is alive. And that's what we celebrate on the day. We celebrate, we serve a risen Savior. And I don't know how you feel, but I'm glad about that. I'm glad that he's alive. I'm glad that we serve a risen Savior. I'm glad that he's able today uh, to do what no other can do. Uh, do I have a witness in here? Yes, I'm concerned about what's going on. But I'm not panicking about what's going on. Because uh, I still know somebody that's at the river who's giving sight to the blind. I, I still uh, know somebody that will make a way out of no way. Uh, I still uh, know somebody that has all healing power right in the hem of his garment. Uh, do I have a witness in here? Do I have a praying church in here? Is there anybody here that loves loves my Jesus. Is there anybody here that loves my Lord? Is there anybody here that knows he's worthy to be praised? We serve a risen Savior because he's alive. Everything is going to be all right. First of all, how do you I know he's alive? He's alive because the text said that if Christ be not risen, then my preaching is in vain. In other words, while I was still in the womb of Lucius, Roberts, and Isaiah, and the Lord had already ordained me to be a preacher of the gospel, while I was still in the womb, didn't know what God had in purpose for me, God was still working it out on my behalf. He's alive. My preaching would be in vain if he wasn't alive. When I stood before the congregation at the Brooklyn Baptist Church on November 26, 1995, to preach my initial sermon, if I don't believe that he's alive, I never should open the book in November to declare my initial sermon. When I was ordained by the Gethsemane Baptist Association in December 1996, if I didn't believe that he was alive, I never went, should have gone through the ordination of the catechism process. Uh -huh. When I was called to pastor the Central Baptist Church in January 1997, I should have never showed up uh -huh. if I didn't believe that Christ was alive. Yeah. Do I have a witness in here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Over the 23 years preaching close to 1,400 sermons, every time I stood to preach, but I didn't believe he was alive, I should never stand behind this sacred desk. Over the 200 plus funerals I preached, if I didn't believe that he was alive, I never should have stood to preach. Over the 500 to 600 Bible studies and workshops I've done, if I didn't believe that he was alive, I never should have been doing those workshops. If I didn't believe he was alive, I need to quit quoting Jeremiah 3, 15, I will give you pastors according to my own heart. That'll feed you with knowledge and understanding. But 1 Corinthians 1, 21 said, Paul suggested that it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. If I didn't believe that he was alive, I need to quit quoting Timothy 4, 1 and 2, 1 Timothy. While Paul charged his son Timothy in the ministry, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the quick and the dead at his appearing, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exalt, with all long suffering and doctrine. But I didn't believe that he was alive. I need to quit talking about Romans 10, 13 through 15. For whosoever shall be called on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? Yes. And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? I should not be saying woe unto me if I preach not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that my preaching is in vain, not in vain. I'd rather be a preacher than the president of the United States. I'd rather be a preacher than the governor of the state of South Carolina. I'd rather be a preacher than the whole leader of the position. Why is that, Israel? I'd rather be a preacher 
Because when I'm on my sick bed, I need a preacher to stop by and tell me that by his strike, will I be healed. I need when, I'm, when death has invaded my family, I need to hear preachers say, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I need to hear a preacher in my name. When I'm down and out, that God will supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. When I'm tired, I need to hear the preacher say, come unto me all that labor and a heavy lay, and I will give you rest. Uh, now I have a witness of them. I'm glad uh, that my preaching is not in vain. I'm glad uh, when I stand up to give the good news, uh, it's not in vain. Uh, I'm glad uh, when I say the wages of sin is death, uh, but the gift of God is eternal life, that my preaching is not in vain. Because we serve a risen Satan. Not only is my preaching not in vain, but my faith, the Bible says, is in vain if I don't believe that Christ is alive. The text in 14 says, our faith is in vain if Christ be not risen. In other words, if everything that we believe in would be in vain, our belief system is being challenged. When I come to the Red Sea of life, my faith tells me that I can overcome because the Lord is on my side. When I deal with the mountains in my life, my faith shows up and says he can move mountains. Now there is a difference between questioning and doubting God. Do I have a witness in him? When you're questioning God, you're saying, Lord, uh, I don't believe. Uh, Oh, but when you're doubting God, you say, Lord, I believe, I just don't understand. That's questioning God. But doubting God is saying, Lord, I don't believe. Uh, when you have faith, you can have a friend who's lame in the house, and you'll take the roof off the top of the house and get, in the pres get your friend in the presence of God. When you have the faith, you can be like a widow with only two mites, but you'll put those two mites together and you'll give them to the Lord. Uh -huh. When you have faith, you can say, we come this far by faith, just leaning and depending on the Lord. Uh, yeah. Do I have a witness in here? When you have that type of faith, uh, you know that the Lord is able, and the Lord can do anything but fail. Uh, do I have a witness in here? When you have that type of faith, uh, you can say better days are coming. Do I have a witness in here? By and by. Uh, when you have that type of faith, you know the Lord is still in the blessing business. And it didn't bring me this far in order to leave, man. you have a witness in here. When you have that type of faith, uh, you can say we walk by faith uh, and not by sight. Uh, when you have that type of faith, uh, you can say you got faith the size of a mustard seed. And if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can look at your mountain and tell your mountain to move. Uh, and your mountain must move out of your way. Uh, do I have a witness in here? Uh, is there anybody here that love my Jesus? Is there anybody here that love the Lord? Uh, is there anybody here that will praise his name? Because uh, we serve a risen Savior. Do I have a witness in here? As I get ready to close now, I want to remind you, uh, yes, we serve a risen Savior. Why do I know he's alive? Because uh, my preaching is not in vain. Uh, how did I know he's alive? Because uh, my faith uh, is not in vain. Uh, do I have a witness in here? How do I know he's alive? Because uh, finally the Bible says, uh, our sins are forgiven. Uh, that's good news there. If Christ was not risen, uh, my sins would not be forgiven. Uh, oh, I wish I had a praying church. Uh, I'm glad that when I messed up, uh, I'm glad I confess up. Uh, I'm so glad uh, I can tell God all about it. Is there anybody here that's praying with me? Uh, I'm glad he took my sins uh, on a hill called Calvary and nailed my sins uh, to an old rugged cross. Uh, is there anybody here 
that's glad that your sins have been forgiven. I'm glad in Hebrews 10 and 17, he put my sins behind his back. I'm glad in 1 John and 7, he washed my sin in his own blood. I'm glad Isaiah said he would not remember our sins anymore. I'm glad he cast our sins in the sea of forgetness. Is there anybody here that's glad that your sins have been forgiven? Do I have a witness in there? When he cast your sins in the sea of forgiveness, when your nosy neighbors went there saying they wanted to go fishing to dig up your stuff, he had a sign hanging up saying it's been been closed. Uh, no more fishing allowed in here because if God has forgiven me, uh, it doesn't matter what you think of me. It doesn't matter what you say about me. Do I have a witness in here? Well, I wish I had somebody that wanted to have church in here. I wish I had somebody that wanted to praise him. Uh, see, God is not like man uh, that he should lie. Uh, one day he wrote a check uh, for all of humanity. He signed the check uh, with the blood of Jesus. He insured the check uh, with the FDIC, uh, the Father's divine integrity and immutable character. He made the check out on Good Friday along with humanity rap sheet. He nailed it to the cross. Uh, they deposited our Lord in a sealed tomb in order to cover the transaction. He died. Didn't he die? He died. Didn't he die? He died so that man could live. He died so that Adam could get back to the east gate. He died so that Moses would give up wine. He died so that Isaac's life would be spared. He died that Jeremiah's tears would dry up. He died that Samson would find his strength. He died so Solomon knew his wisdom. He died so that David would know goodness and mercy. He died so that Mary would have a terrorist testimony. The deal was processed on Solomon Saturday. Get early. I said early. I said early. On Sunday morning, the check cleared the bank and he got up. Is there anybody here? Know that he got up, not with some power, but shout all power, shout all power, shout all power, shout all power. Is there anybody here? No, he got all power, wonder working power. Saving power, delivering power, healing power, miracle power. He got all power in his hand. Shout it Shout it Shout it Shout it Shout it Shout it Not some power, but all, but all, but all. We serve a risen Savior. Church, I want you to know he's alive. He walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. How do I know that he's alive? Because dead folks can't talk. And just this morning, I had a little talk with Jesus. And he told me everything was going to be all right. How do I know he's alive? Because dead folks can't see. And he looks beyond my faults. Supplies all of my needs. According to his riches and glory. Do I have a witness in here? How do I know he's alive? Because dead folks can't walk. And he walks with me, talks with me, tells 
tells me that I am his own. How are we going to handle the virus? We can't handle it. Presidents can't handle it. Experts can't handle it. But there is somebody that's alive that's going to work it out. And he's working it out on our behalf. He's doing it right now. Leave here today knowing that we serve a risen Savior. How you going to make it? And they told you you can't go to work and you can't earn income. I'm going to tell you somehow, some way, God's going to step in the mix and he's going to work it out for you ahead. Because see, God is stepping and show you you can live off a lot less if you budget what you have. Amen. Do I have a witness in here? Amen. You know, eating out and doing a lot of stuff you used to do, you have to curtail it. It's time to slap the meat between the two slices of bread. Amen. You do what you got to do. Amen. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. You never knew you could save so much gas so you kept your car parked. God has a way of working it out on good. I want you to know we serve a risen Savior. He's alive. How do I know he's alive? Because the Bible says, if he's not risen, my preaching is in vain. And I don't just believe for 27 years of preaching and gospel that my preaching is in vain. I know he's alive. He's alive because the Bible says, if he's not alive, your faith is in vain. Then you mean that which I believe? is in vain and then I know that he's alive because my sins have been forgiven other folks may not forgive you but God has forgiven you he's, he's forgiven you and he said that he'll cast them into the sea of forgiveness so they shall not rise anymore as we extend the invitation to discipleship there may be someone up on the sound of my voice who want to step out from where you are. Give the pastor your hand, but give God your heart on Resurrection Sunday. Those who are listening by our live streaming, YouTube, Facebook, you can call our church office 252-3742. If you desire membership with our church family, someone will return your call or get with you immediately. We want you to be a part of our family. You may come by letter, by your Christian experience, or a candidate for baptism. But we serve a risen Savior. The reason there's hope in this world today is because Christ is alive. Amen. The door of the church is open. testimony right there. Say it again. That's not how. That's not how. The story. Three days. Three days later. He rose again. That's love. That's love. 
Let us prepare for our altar prayer. Let us prepare for altar prayer. Let us remember all our known sick and shut in. Let us remember all our known sick and shut in as we go to God in prayer. For the God we serve is a prayer from God. I say to members of our praise team, continue lifting prayer, Sister Mary Harper. Y'all know Mary will be up there with you. She possibly could be there. I uh, pray with Mary. She's doing, she's being challenged medically. Just keep her in much prayer. As I've communicated with Mary and her daughter Tammy, keep her in much prayer. Keep Brother James in prayer and his wife, Velma. Keep the McDuffie family in prayer. The family sister, Ruth Curry, we keep her in prayer for the transition of her daughter. We continue to lift Sister Gloria uh, Dickerson Moss in prayer with the passing of her husband. We lift that family in much prayer right now. Keep them in prayer because God is a prayer asking God. Amen. He's able to do anything but fail. Amen. We keep in prayer for all of those who have been affected by this virus right now. But we know that, take me down a little bit quiet, but we know that God is able to do exceedingly abundant above all we ask to think according to the power that worketh within us. Amen. And God has not brought us this far in order to leave us. Let me tell you, every day the news reports are alarming. Every day it seems like there are more victims than the day before. Some places they are having to stack bodies in refrigerated trucks because they don't have enough room in the marks for all the bodies. Let me tell you, start to hit close to home. You start to hear about family members and friends that you went to school with. I made some calls to some of my friends in Georgia and found out that some of the people that we went to school with have been victims of it. It's everywhere. It's all over my brothers and my sisters. And let me encourage you, trust God in spite of any and everything you hear around you, all right? Hold on to your faith. When times are tough, when times are challenges, don't try to do anything to get ahead now. You just wait on God. I made up my mind, if I don't have it, I can do without it. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. If I don't have it, I can do without it. Amen. Amen. That God is still going to supply me with what I need. That's right. Just continue to trust God. As I pray each day, I pray for strength from God for those families. And it's so sad when you have loved ones in the hospital, loved yeah. ones in nursing facility, you can't go see. That's right. You can't go visit. Mm. Loved ones are passing all by themselves. The lady said, Pastor, Mama died. There was nobody with her. I said, baby, family might not have been with her, but your mama been walking with the Lord for a long That's time. Right. Right. There was somebody with her. How do I know? Because he promised never to leave her. Yes. And he promised never to forsake her. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you for this Resurrection Sunday. We thank you for your reminder in your word on this day, God. Reminder that we serve a risen Savior. For the text said that if Christ be not risen, our preaching would be in vain, our faith would be in vain, our witnessing would be in vain, and we would be yet still in our sins. We thank you because your word has reminded us that you are a forgiving God. If we confess our sins, God, you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us up from all unrighteousness. God, we're facing some challenges that we never faced before. But there's no challenge before us that's any greater than the God that is leading us. We've often talked to God about our problems. Every now and then we need to talk to our problems about our God. How great thou art, God, and you have been blessing us down through the years and you're still keeping us right now. We pray for this leadership at the nation that you will bring that leadership on one accord. 
but we pray for mankind throughout the land, all states, all countries right now. We need to band together like we never banded together before. For it affects one of us, affects all of us, because we are our brothers and our sisters keep us. We need your strength now. We need your courage now. We need you to keep us united together on one accord now. And we pray for religious leaders and religious house of worship all over the land. Men are being challenged like they've never been challenged before. We pray that not only do we be spiritually led, but God, we have wisdom in the way we plan our worship service and the atmosphere that we plan them for. We don't want anybody to put themselves at any unusual risk, God. We're praying for our elderly. We're praying for those with underlying condition that this virus can be a great challenge. But not many young people are being invaded by this virus right now. It's all over and it's affecting everybody. But through it all, we're trusting in you. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. All thy ways acknowledge you. And you shall direct our path. We're trusting in you right now. We're leaning on you right now. We're depending right now. For we know the Lord will see you soon. We just don't believe that you brought us this far in order to leave us. Keep us in your cap. We'll be mindful to give your name the praise and the glory. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank God and amen. amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance and give you peace. Henceforth now and forevermore.